This is Celebrity Thursdays. Every Thursday, we present you with another celebrity. Today, we're looking at 15 Things You Didn't Know About Freddie Mercury. Welcome to ALUX.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers. It's time to hit the stage with Her Majesty, Queen. As the entire world celebrates Freddie's legacy, we're going to dig a little deeper and find out some interesting, lesser-known facts about the life and career of one of the most influential rock legends of all time, Freddie Mercury. He was actually born Farouk Balsara in Zanzibar to Parsi parents that were originally from India. The family later escaped Zanzibar all the way to the UK, where Freddie's life took a turn for the best, and he later became a worldwide rock legend and co-founder of Queen. He is responsible for writing some of Queen's best and most famous songs, and has been awarded various times for his performances with the band but also his solo career. Many people only know him from the tabloids and other interviews, but Freddie's life was more than that. It was more than his music or than his sexuality. He lived a life full of joy, extravaganza, and luxury, although he passed away young. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at Alux. So let's peek behind all the glam, costumes, and money and take a look at the 15 things you didn't know about Freddie Mercury. Number 1. His clothes are being sold for thousands of dollars. Most of Freddie's costumes and stage outfits were specially made for him by various designers. Out of all of them, there are a few outstanding pieces that everyone remembers, like the catsuit, the royal crown and cape, or his jackets. The white and red military-style jacket he wore on the Queen Magic Tour was estimated to be $80,000 by an auction. It was designed by Diana Mosley, and Freddie wore it back in 1986, the final tour he did with the band. At this stage, his clothes are almost at the same value as Michael Jackson and Jimi Hendrix. Number 2. His parties were insane and extravagant. Most Queen performances depict Freddie wearing crazy costumes and tailored clothes specially made for him. He loved to dress up and host even crazier parties at his house. Some of the parties included naked servers, entertainers biting heads off of live chickens, nude models wrestling in baths, and dwarves walking around with trays of cocaine. He would dress up for them, or have his guests dress up according to the theme of the party. Rumors say he used to sleep with several women and men, but none of them were ever confirmed by Freddie. Most people recall him as being shy and private, but he must have had some kind of ego when it came to partying. Number 3. He Threw the Biggest Party Ever in Ibiza When you're Freddie Mercury, you can celebrate your birthday in style. For his 41st birthday, the rock star legend threw a legendary party in Ibiza like no other has ever seen before. He celebrated at the Pikes Hotel just months after his HIV diagnosis. It seems that no bad news could stop Mr. Fahrenheit. He had over 700 exclusive guests, like Kylie Minogue, Bon Jovi, and Boy George. He had arranged crazy fireworks for them that could be seen from Majorca. They dined and drank over 350 bottles of Moet and Shandon champagne, as well as exquisite foods. The bill for the lavish party included paying for 232 glasses which had been smashed. We can only imagine how crazy extravagant it must have been. Number 4. He often wanted to have a piano in the weirdest locations. When inspiration hits you hard, you need a pen, paper, and your go-to instrument. Freddie was a piano player, so he needed a piano to make his ideas come to life. As he was a very eccentric and high-maintenance person, he would often ask for a piano in the weirdest locations. 
He had brought them to the bathroom, at his headboard and any parts of the house. Although it might seem very pretentious of him to do that, it's how he lived his life, being glamorous and extra every day, not only on stage. Number 5. He left all of his fortune and assets to his ex-girlfriend, Mary Austin. Being one of the most famous frontmen in the world, Freddie Mercury managed to put together quite a fortune. He owned a house in central London, luxury objects, expensive clothing, and royalties to his songs. At its peak, he had a net worth of around $100 million, of which half went to Mary Austin when he died. She was his first true love and best friend. Nowadays, with the Bohemian Rhapsody movie release, she made some more money out of his legacy. Want to know how much? Then keep on watching. Number 6. One of his managers told fake stories about Freddie for $40,000. Not everyone around you is your friend. One of Freddie's managers, Paul Prenter, used his inside info to trash his reputation in the media after their relationship ended. It was perceived as a betrayal, especially since he sold fake stories to tabloids for money. He was paid $40,000 back then by The Sun for a few interviews and articles about Freddie's private life. He was managing Freddie for less than 10 years, and his influence wasn't the best on Freddie as some suggest. Number 7. Some fans were throwing razor blades at him during concerts. Freddie has always had a chameleonic personality. He was wearing women's clothing, fur, tights, glitter, or costumes. After the glam rock period of the 70s, he adopted a more manly style with a mustache, something he took from New York's gay bar culture. Fans weren't too keen on his new style, and they used to throw razor blades at him during concerts, implying he should shave his mustache. Unfortunately for them, though, he kept the mustache for many years, and it sort of became his signature look. Number 8. He told his parents very late about his sexuality. At first, Freddie described himself as being bisexual, but as the years went by, he realized that women aren't actually what he liked. That is one of the major reasons he didn't marry Mary Austin, although they were engaged. As for his family, he hid this as long as he could. Back in the day, being homosexual was pretty unpopular and tough, and his parents were Zoroastrians, which meant that being gay was considered a type of demonic worship. However, publicly, he never acknowledged being gay or having HIV, in spite of the rumors. Number 9. One of his lyric notebooks sold at an auction for $90,000. Most of Freddie's belongings, especially personal belongings, are very cherished by millions of fans and collectors. Some of his things ended up being sold at auctions for thousands of dollars, but there's one special item that caught everyone's attention, his lyric notebook. In 2016, one of his handwritten lyric notebooks hit the auction block. The notebook has the lyrics of the famous songs Too Much Love Will Kill You and Show Must Go On, giving some insight at his final years as he found out he had HIV. The price for this unique item? Around $90,000. Number 10. He lived in a London mansion with his cats. Freddie was a cat person. He had around 10 cats, and each one of them was treated very well, with their own rooms, the best food, dedicated songs, and of course, lots of love. The Kensington house is worth over $25 million and is now the residence of Mary Austin. He moved into the house in 1985, and after his passing, the house was left to his ex fiance she still lives in the house and takes up Freddie's fans' gifts. Kensington is one of the best areas in central London where you can find the Prime Minister's house, celebrities, and billionaires. And Aluxers, if you want to see the houses of other celebrities, then we have the perfect video for you. 
Check out our video, The Top 10 Most Expensive Houses of Movie Stars, by clicking in the top right corner. Number 11. Freddie's money from the Bohemian Rhapsody movie went to Mary Austin's pockets. Being Freddie's most trusted person, Mary got herself the rights to all of his work and assets after his death. So when Bohemian Rhapsody the movie was produced, a part of the profits went to Mary Austin's pockets as well. The movie grossed over $780 million worldwide in box office earnings in less than a year. Sources say she made around $50 million so far from the film. However, not all the revenues went to Mary Austin, because she only gets 75% of his post-mortem earnings. Number 12. He used to visit his parents with his Rolls Royce. A rock star's life is full of tours, parties, and album recording sessions. The constant media attention and commitments keep you away from family and friends. Freddie always found time to visit his parents, even when he was at his peak. He used to have his driver take him to their house in his Rolls Royce. Yep, he was that extra. After his death, the car sold at auction for almost $100,000, which was six times more than its original value. A Russian businessman bought it a few years ago. Number 13. He had a $250,000 koi fish pond. Young Freddy used to collect stamps. As he grew older and richer, he tasted the good life and luxury. Besides his passion for shopping and good times, he was also collecting rare carp fish back in London. This rare carp fish was like no other. They were two feet long and worth more than $15,000 each. He had around 80 of them, meaning that this pond was worth more than $250,000. They were kept in a beautiful Japanese-style garden he had at home. The collection was one of the biggest of its kind. Number 14. He took Princess Diana to a gay bar. Growing up in England, Freddie took the royal family as inspiration for a lavish lifestyle and performance. Even the band's logo resembled a coat of arms, Freddie designed himself using all the members' signs. To close the royal circle, he actually met with Princess Diana in a very unusual place. A friend of hers decided to take her one night to a gay bar with Freddie and Kenny Everett. They dressed her in a camo coat and hat, and somehow nobody recognized her the whole night. Number 15. There is a Killer Queen vodka released in his tribute. Freddie enjoyed a good vodka with him on tour, as the band members recall. In 2014, Queen celebrated 40 years since they released their hit Killer Queen. To mark the milestone, they collaborated with a Latvian producer to launch a special vodka called Killer Queen Vodka. They chose vodka and that name because they knew how much Freddie would appreciate it. Even years after his passing, his spirit and personality is still considered. It comes in both a 700 and 750 milliliter version, retailing for $32 depending on the seller. Being a rock star does sound glamorous and all kinds of extra. Looking at the life of legend Freddie Mercury, we have to admit that although he lived a short life, it was intense, fun, and flamboyant, just like his personality. He left behind a huge music and fashion legacy, as well as more awareness about HIV-AIDS. Do you think he spent his money recklessly, or would you have done the same given the circumstances? Let us know in the comments, rock star. We'd love to know your thoughts. And of course, since you're still with us, you deserve an extra bonus. Number 16. Rami Malek has casted his Freddie Mercury teeth in gold. As the film Bohemian Rhapsody hit the movie theaters successfully in 2018, it brought more light onto Queen and the great job the team had done with casting, costumes, and production of the movie. Rami Malek was chosen to play Freddie Mercury, and he did an extraordinary job. But of course, to play the role, he needed some prosthetic teeth. But after filming wrapped up, 
Rami kept the teeth and casted them in gold, a very over-the-top detail that he might have picked up while playing the fabulous Freddy, because gold teeth are definitely fitting of a queen. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.